50 years ago, the campaign for African-American civil rights was in full swing. Formal decolonization was still ongoing. And the Operation Rolling Thunder, the enormous escalation of the American bombing campaign of Vietnam was only months away. 50 years ago, Malcolm X stood in this chamber and delivered what has been described as an excoriating critique of American racism, which changed the discourse about race in both Britain and America. I can't promise you that much tonight for myself. I will let other speakers decide for themselves about their own contributions. Uh, however, there are some continuities with 50 years ago. The US, much like the rest of the world, is still dealing with an ugly both legacy and continuation of racism. Most recently exemplified there were a response to the grand jury acquittal of Darren Wilson, the Fergan Ferguson police officer who murdered Mike Brown. States all around the world are involved in ill-advised, underthought, and immoral wars. And all around the globe, there are attempts to deny people their liberty to speak, to think, to act, to live, to be. And tonight, by supporting the proposition, what you do is you support at least their right to resist, to attempt to invo invo invoke some kind of meaningful change and improvement to their lives. It is a tremendous honor to speak in the Union tonight, particularly on such an historic occasion and with such illustrious speakers rather than the motley crew of Tory backbenchers who are generally dragged out for this sort of thing. <laughs> So, tonight speaking on the opposition, speaking first, we have Radhanath Swami, a monk and spiritual teacher who is a founder of a hospital in Mumbai and currently member of the body, governing body commission of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Fergus Peace, a Maudlin P. Pierce, an aspiring grad student, and our very own Maranissa, um, who is a former English and history student and inexplicably still at the Union. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do three things in this speech today. First of all, I'm going to establish the parameters for this debate. Secondly, I'm going to talk about the way that the term extremism is generally applied to people who challenge the structures of power and who challenge the status quo, and therefore why telling people extreme in any meaningful sense is often a misnomer constructed to discredit them. And, there, um, and, why, and thirdly, I'm going to talk about even if there is an objective concept of extremism, you know, the platonic form of the extreme, um, why its act, extreme acts are justified and indeed not just not of advice but indeed a virtue. First of all, however, let's get going in terms of establishing what the parameters of this debate are. So, the motion of this debate does, of course, emerge not from the union but a statement made by, in your guts, you know he's nuts, Barry Goldwater, um, a man who, among other things, advocated the strategic use of nuclear weapons uh, in the Vietnam War. Let me be very clear, this debate doesn't, we do not need to accept every act which might be justified in this way. Any normative statement at a certain level of abstraction can be twisted. The terms good, justice and liberty have frequently been misused to endorse appalling acts. That does not, however, mean that this principle is not applicable and valid in certain situations. And therefore, in this debate, all we need to do is justify it in certain contexts. So, Let's try and fill those abstract terms with a bit of content. What does liberty mean? I mean, I spent three years of my degree on this and I still don't have an answer, but I can trace some contours. So, what, what do we mean? It means respect for your bodily integrity, it means dignity, it means self-respect, and it means the respect and equal, uh, equal regard from others, um, and equal treatment. Uh, and this, is, this might seem like a soft prop, but this is something that people are denied every single day, not just through active perpetuation of oppression, but by through the passive neglect which allows oppression to continue in every society around the world. That considered, let's move on to the substantive. So, what is the, what, what, what is the concept of extremism? What do we mean by the term extremism? It might seem self-evident, right? It's terrorism and violence and lawlessness, but these terms can equally be reframed as freedom fighting, self-defense, and civil disobedience, right? It very much, the way that we choose to apply labels to people's actions is heavily contingent on the way we've implicitly already assessed their actions. And these are particularly true when you, uh, these are acts which, which do not reflect the dominant norms of society, right? What is extremism except an act beyond what we currently define as normal? 
And who defines normal? It's the most powerful people in society. That means the dominant racial groups. It means the dominant sexual groups. It means the dominant religious groups. It means the powers that be. And therefore, any act which is termed, or many acts which are termed extreme, are merely acts which go beyond what we currently define as normal, which challenge the status quo and challenge the powers that be. Redistribution of wealth is only an extreme idea because of the way that wealth is so inex extremely distributed right now. The, uh, the, the, the uh, concepts are only extreme insofar as they deviate from what we consider to be acceptable, and that is not necessarily what, in, in a general term, should or is indeed right. Moreover, people in power don't need acts that we term extreme. Why would you need to destroy property when you can control it through legislatures, through courts, through the media, right? People who need extreme acts are those who are the most dispossessed because they don't have any other form of voice. The ballot box is not enough when you are a numerical minority, when you do not have control of capital to change the, the attitudes of businesses. If you cannot use your, your dollar, your pound, whatever, whatever currency you want, um, to try and change society, if your vote will always be less than, then what else do you have but trying to destroy what other people use to oppress you? Ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, people who are called extremists are just those who choose to challenge the status quo. They are not necessarily people who are acting in an extreme way when we reflect back on it. Um, and that's something that we need to consider. Therefore, even if we want to accept that some acts are extreme insofar as violence will always be a shocking act, they are also acts which are necessary because they are the only tool that people frequently have to actually enact meaningful change and access things like self-respect, like at least some regard from others, and to cry out and demand that equal treatment. It is not accorded to millions and billions of people every single day, and it will not be accorded because they do not have hands on the levers of power. The only way they can get attention sometimes is through extremism, and that is an exceptionally important and valid thing to do if we regard people's individuality and their and, and the respect for their equal treatment as something that we Need, need to access. Look, I'm aware that as a 21-year-old undergraduate with an accent like this, it does seem slightly farcical and incongruous that I'm advocating extremism, reform, and radical wealth redistribution. But that doesn't mean that these words or these ideas that I'm advancing are wrong. It doesn't mean that there aren't people who are acting in self-defense against economic systems which degrade them every single day against autocrats and indeed against democratically elected representatives who nonetheless consistently fail to represent them. That doesn't mean those things don't happen and that doesn't mean those arguments aren't true. There are still groups which profit from these people's subjugation and won't listen if extremism doesn't try and grant these people liberty. And that is what you should try and bear in mind when you choose how to vote this evening. Thank you.